right now. And um, we are continuing. Uh, we are continuing from um, the camping and outdoor education. Anything else to do with camping, I'm not going to cover. Uh, anything to do with uh, outdoor activity, I'm not going to cover because it has already been um, done by uh, Comrade Auxilia yesterday. I'm just going to focus on the aspects that have to do with camping. Uh, we will circulate the, uh, the, the notes to this module so that all of us can, can have that on our file. You just want me to take note of who is present here and then I can stop here. Okay. So I want to start off by telling a story. But as I start off uh, with telling the story, the one thing is no one goes through a camping experience without some mark being left on them. It is not possible. There will be some mark that is left on that, uh, on that individual. You can't go through a camping experience and just go in the same, come out the same. There are things that I experienced 12 years ago that even up to today I remember vividly from, um, from these different camping, uh, camping activities. That's the first thing. The other thing is, uh, we should all remember, I think this, this um, uh, Comrade William spoke about this yesterday, when he spoke about uh, influence. We all have influence on the people that we are living. So that's another aspect we have to remember. Um, about 13 years ago, I was uh, congregating in briefly in East Zimbabwe. So there's a place called East Zimbabwe Conference. Now, what the conference decided to do, I'm telling this story. So you remember the basic, I want to share the basic philosophy or idea behind, uh, the basic philosophy or idea behind camping. What is it that we're trying to achieve? But from this story, as I go through the presentation, you are going to note <coughs> a number of items that, oh, okay, no, that story, okay, this is what happened. So what the conference decided to do in this particular year, they used to run every year, there was a one year, there was a one week camp out. And um, the conference had just acquired a new campsite. Yeah? So when you say a new campsite, usually sometimes when you go to campsites, like in, let's say Anamalai or different campsites, you find that there's a bit of structure that is already there because over and over and over people have come out, have come to that place. But this campsite was completely new. It was just a push. <laughs> so, no one knew that this is the situation. We were just told, okay, there's this campsite, people got excited, young people into our some we get on lorries, or trucks, whatever it is, or minibuses, we went there. Unfortunately, a number of us we are arriving at night. We are arriving there at night, there's no electricity, it's just a push. You can't see who's where. And it had been pouring. Yeah, it had been raining. People were not amused by this whole scenario. Because now you get there and you are saying, so we are pitching your tents, and it's just grass this high, and there's just trees, and it's at night, and you have to start what? Stamping down, clearing the ground, clearing the ground. I know some 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 campers slept in the in the back of their lorries. Yeah? They just said, ah, you know what? I think let's just sleep in our lorries. We'll sort this out when? Tomorrow morning. Uh, we woke up in the morning, but of course, you know, there are some people who are, who are taking it as it's fun because some people are it's, it's uncomfortable. We're in the middle of nowhere, guys. What's happening? No electricity. To make it even worse, as soon as you are getting towards, as soon as you are getting towards this campsite, the network on your phone will just go out. So if you wanted to make a call, you'd have to move maybe a two kilometer, three kilometer straight for you to just go and make what? A phone call. 
So we are there, you can't be calling people to say, guys, let me squeeze and all that. Wake up in the morning, there's no water. Water was maybe a, a kilometer and a half or two kilometers away. The only water source that was nearby was this dam. And people are bathing inside, people are doing what? People were not happy about that. You also did not have um, sanitation, yeah? Twins. They, they are not yet. So people were, people were not happy. People were angry. Oh, how can they do this? <coughs> back and forth, back and forth. But you are there. You just have to deal with what's what? What's there? But what I can tell you, interestingly enough, when the week was ending, people didn't want to go back home. <laughs> yeah? When the week was ending, people did not want to go back home. home because they enjoyed that, that experience. At first, when you arrived, you were saying, hey, guys, what's happening here? But after a week of being there, it was a place where people think, ah, you should have just extended another what? Another week. And I can assure you, every camp that I went to, it was almost on an annual basis. Um, it's not twice in a year. These are conference events, aside from the normal Pathfinder units, like camp outs. So, uh, it's, it's, it's something that is enjoyable for young people and for Pathfinder. So, uh, the ground we're going to cover. So, the ground we're going to cover. Firstly, we're going to talk about the philosophy of camping. We're going to talk about basic camp planning. How do you plan a camp? Just the basic, I'll be very brief with it. We're going to talk about the types of camping that we have. And then finally, we'll cover the basic components. Uh, we'll cover the basic components of, uh, of good camping. So, what is the philosophy? So when we talk about philosophy, we're saying, what is the guide, what are the guiding principles? What is the attitude behind? What's the reasoning behind this whole thing that we change camping? So briefly, you, you just take notes, but uh, you don't have to write uh, too much in detail because I will uh, circulate a PDF that has to do with this. Right, so the first thing is uh, outdoor living. This is camping. Outdoor living has great potential for spiritual values and character building. And you will note as we go along what, what these things are. So uh, it's an opportunity for practicing democratic group uh, democratic group procedures. Because you are in a group, you are not alone. So you need to learn to say, okay, find what are the procedures that are going to apply so that this group works properly, so that this camp goes on well. Uh, it's also an opportunity to build self-reliance for the pathfinders uh, and young people because you are out in the open. Uh, some of the camps, so there are different types. There are some where we say, we are contributing, we are getting our food all together, and we are going to go there, and it's, it's everyone in, in, in one in one country, I can put it that way. But there are unit camps or individual cl uh, class camps where it's you and your backpack, usually for the survival camp. Huh? It's just you, one bag, food in that bag for three days, and everything else, and you are, you are gone. And we go through, uh, we talk about types of camp as we go along. But basically, that also teaches you uh, self reliance. You also have to be resourceful as you are out there. Oh, okay, fine. We need something to hang up stuff on. We need something to do this. It teaches you uh, resourcefulness. So, some of the owners that we, we go through, one of them that's very clear and important is going to be not tired. You are going to have to build maybe a rack to put your plates, you're going to have to build maybe a stool, and someone has to sit. Are going to, there are different things that we can do. Uh, we won't go through it today, but as we go through the year, uh, when we say we're doing the owners, uh, the non time owner, please make sure you, you come through with that. There's also the aspect of self-discipline. Self-discipline, the aspect of saying, there are some people who, I remember, you are there, and someone said, oh, I wish I could have cake with chan chan chan. And you're sitting there and you're saying, we are at camp. <laughs> now, what used to happen is some of these camps used to go, um, and sometimes you go very senior pastors. Before you take off, all your bags will be put there, and they would search them crisps, out chocolate, out sweets, out, and you leave everything 
there. This, this is now survival come I'm just saying to say, so there will be an aspect of self-discipline that comes to that comes with it, uh, self-respect for other people, and then practical application. Yesterday, uh, Comrade Rosilla spoke about nature. So nature law are just the books and all these different things. Now you get to apply it practically. Okay, no, okay, this is, I've learned about birds. Oh, that's that bird. Okay, we've learned about trees. Okay, this is that one, that tree. So all these different things we've learned about, about nature. Uh, and best of all, pathfinders love to go out, uh, to go out camping. Now, uh, one thing that we always emphasize is to say, when we talk about outdoor living and camping, we're not strictly talking about where we have gone out, yeah? But activities that we can do outside. So the recommendation is to say a large portion of the program that we have, we have been, <coughs> essentially be things that are outdoor. It doesn't have to be camping, maybe the day trip, go out somewhere, come back, do things outside here at church, and avoid uh, just having theory, theory, theory. So you know to say, most of our AY, as it is structured now, which is not the best, is the majority is achievement part, achievement classes. We come, uh, okay, and there's very few of the outdoor practical activities that pathfinders are supposed to have, are supposed to do with young people. So that's one aspect of it. And uh, another philosophy behind, so this is very interesting. I learned this when I was doing my PLA, I had no idea about this. Uh, it will come handy in the time of trouble. So you know, we grew up being told, no, there's a time that's where we come, we're going to have the sun and all, that's where I want to buy and sell, and then all of us will have to run away to where? To the mountains. This is what we believe as Seventh day Adventists. Now, how are you going to survive out in the mountains if you've never had that experience? Yeah? So you have to say, oh no, so where are we going to cook? Oh no, so where are we going to sleep? And you say, no, it's what? It's camp, yeah? I remember one year, one pathfinder, one year group brought a gas-powered refrigerator to camp, yeah? <laughs> they got their gas-powered refrigerator in the back of the truck, they came with it, and everyone said, guys, we, we should be able to survive without this what? Without these things. So, that's, that's, that's our, this is all part of the philosophy of why we talk about camping. Uh, benefits to the camper problems. So this is one of the good aspects about, about this to say, Mr. Tapia, they learn. Uh, another aspect is self-respect and self-confidence. As you learn to manage and do things for yourselves. Uh, the one thing that I, I, I had the opportunity um, to be part of uh, a district of um, back then, a district where you say they were quite wealthy individuals, yeah? People were quite wealthy. Um, in different places, two different districts, two different I had the opportunity to be part of that. So some of them don't do anything at home. Like literally, they don't. Some of them, they will be like, ah, no, I cooked in Sima. This is an 18-year-old young lady who is proud that she has cooked what? Sima. Which means they have never cooked They've never done it, yeah? So when we go to camp, the, the, very, the, the, the good thing about it is it is self-respect and self-confidence. So, okay, you know what, I can do what? I can actually do this. We are there, you know, young, young men, you also be laughing. Ah, what did you guys cook? Ah, no, this is what. But that's part of it. People learn, they develop skills, they gain self-respect and self-confidence. Uh, we used to have a friend. By the time I think we're 18, 19, he, he did not know how to cut wood, cut wood using an axe. Yeah? Absolutely no idea. And I remember me and my friend actually teaching him how to do it at home. To say, okay, no, fine, this is the law. You have to split like this, like this, like this. And these are things that we do when we go for us. We've got an honor. Camping is still on a road to come at some point. It teaches. Uh, the camping skills one actually teaches you uh, how to use, it says how to use a hatchet, yeah? So the hatchet is the one hand, that one hand axe. Yeah, so those are things that you want, that you learn. And the things that you apply and use, whether it's in Pathfinders or somewhere else uh, later on in,
later on in life. Uh, another benefit to the on-campus life is they learn the ability to improvise. Okay, fine, this is where we are. We don't have A, B, C, D, E. What do we do? Yeah? Uh, guys, we don't have a port. What are we going to do? You, you, you have to find a way to survive. That's just what it is. One time, same camp, water poured down. In the morning, you would, on every tree, every branch, wherever you look, we just blankets and what. Because things were soaked. Yeah? We'll talk about that tomorrow. But uh, you learn that we provide, say, oh, fine, we no longer have this, it's been ruined. What do we do from, from this point? Uh, feeling at home in the outdoors. So just feeling at home. You know? Also, uh, there, there, we have said it here, I remember when, when I was around this group, someone was sharing this with me. Uh, kids are still in schools. This kid was telling the teacher, I'm calling the driver at home to come and pick me up so that I can go home to the bathroom and then they'll drive me back to us to school. Because they could not use the bathroom when at school. And, and, that, and that was the, the trend. It's here, here in Atlanta. I said, they can't use the bathroom. So what, what we're just saying is, you feel at they just have to feel at home in the outdoors and be relaxed. Yes, you get to a place where it doesn't seem there's anything. They should be quickly just all know now I'm bored, there's nothing for us to do, we don't have TV, we don't have all these different things. No, they should be able to feel at, feel at home in the outdoors. Uh, another aspect is the respect uh, for the dignity of work and being satisfied. I cooked only what? Only five. Oh no, I managed to cut wood. Oh, we managed to build a bridge across a stream or across a river. Oh, we managed to do A, B, C, D, E. The learned gain and respect for the dignity of work. This is all the philosophy. So when we are doing our, our camping as leaders, or we are taking young people out, this is the whole idea behind it. Say so this is what we want them to, we want them to learn. Um, there's also the pride that comes from good health and physical. I don't know how many of you have ever gone hiking. Gone hiking? Alright. Uh, how easy was the hiking experience? Or how far did you manage to get? <laughs> okay, the, the reason why I'm asking is sometimes when you go hiking, it just it tells you that uh, you are not what? You are not fit. <laughs> yeah? It's, it just tells you, you, you just not say, hey, no, I'm not fit. I need to do something about my, about my health and my fitness. So there's a pride in the good health because it can be rigorous. We'll talk about one camp that we call a traveling camp. Most of the camps that we do are camps where we just plan out. There's a campsite, we're there, and that's it. But they are what are known as traveling camps. You guys, we're going to travel 100 kilometers in the next two, three days. This is the trail, this is how we're going to go. We have the backpack, we have the food. You move, you stop at a place, you come there for the night, you take off again, and then you, you go along. So, the rigor uh, of the outdoor life actually improves our health. And one other important aspect is you get a realistic um, sense of the values. To say, you know, there's something that in our environment we value so much. Yeah? So, especially for young, for young people, they, they begin to appreciate and understand. To say there are some things that are more important than money, material possessions, <coughs> IQ, nice clothes, and all these different, all these, all these different things. Um, and the reason why I say that, I remember I, I spoke to you about this time. I, I, at the end, I'm sitting with one lady and she said to me, you know what, I don't actually even miss my phone. I think this was on a test. And it was, it was shocking to her. And the solution there was just, there was no need. <laughs> yeah? The fact that when they come side where there was no what? Network. And by the time we met in the first day, she was shocked to say, you know what, I don't even miss my what? I don't even miss my, my phone. They begin to realize to say, there are things that are more important. And because they are enjoying being at the camp, the activities that are being done, whatever it is, they end up with things God don't know as a phone. And one was actually saying, that time I think, you know this uh, 
music artists from, from the US and whatever, were actually in the main city where we were coming from. And um, one of them was like, ha! I actually can't believe I'm here. <laughs> yeah? She, she was shocked by herself to say, if it was anything else, I would have been where? I would have been there where this, these musicians are. But because of this kind of experience, that's the reason I'm saying it's, it's something that it's enjoyable for the young people, for pathfinders. And the first statement that I say is it leaves an impression. No one goes to come without an impression being being made. Okay, so that's that's the basic of the philosophy. Uh, what are the guiding what is the guiding principle or idea behind uh, behind coming? Uh, so very quickly, I just want to I think there are three of these. Uh, you can say like this pathfinders make plans for a short hike and cook out. They plan the menu and divide the responsibilities. At the campsite, Jerry and Ben go to get fire while the other boys cook the meal and tend to their duties. In the space of a few minutes, there is a scream and Ben yells for help. The counselor hurriedly makes his way to Ben and finds that Jerry has badly cut his leg with the axe. He administers first aid and the unit makes its way home with the wounded boy. They are found spoiled by an accident. What would have been the best method for preventing this misfortune? So I'll just read maybe for those that have eyesight like mine at the back, you can see. Option number one, the boy should not have been permitted to use the axe. Yeah, we say what should have been done to prevent this misfortune. The boy should not have been permitted to use the axe. Number two, the counselor should have accompanied the boys who were getting the wood. Number three, a project that would have been safer should have been planned. Number four, the boys should have been given better training in the use of the arts. What do we mean? What would have been the, the best method of preventing this misfortune? Some are saying number two, some are saying number four. Follow. <laughs> he says follow them. Okay, these are scenarios that you come you come across. <coughs> yeah. We have been to, I think you'll find almost every time. Especially when you have a lot of time. You just see, ah, oh, so and so has been taken away, well, has been taken back home. These are things that happen. So it's just to say, okay, what? What would have been what would have been done as a discovery point? Okay, so very quickly, maybe those that are saying number two. Why are we saying number two? Uh, if they had gone to a cancer, it would have been seen in the end. Apart from that, there are things that they need by just somebody being with us. That's the point. All right, thank you. Okay, so she's saying, okay, the, the cancer should have gone with them. Uh, and guided them how to use the, the axe or how to cut the wood, okay? Those that are saying number four. The, uh, if, if you're carrying any type of uh, equipment out to the camp, the, um, the campers are supposed to know the type of equipment that they're carrying and to use and how to use it. Thank you. Okay, so no one is saying number one. <laughs> no one is saying number one. An act being dangerous for pathfinders. We don't have anyone saying number one. <laughs> and no one is saying number three. Okay, so now here, here's the issue. Uh, we, we, we will have to meet this situation and say, okay, how do we deal with, with, with these various settings as part of our philosophy? Number one, you can't be everywhere as a person. You go with these guys chopping wood and the ones that you leave are going to bring something, something else. <coughs> yeah, but also at the same time, there's also the issue of confidence, uh, depending on the age you start with. Yeah. Some of them, they'll be very happy. It's, it's actually it builds that self-confidence, self-respect, self I can do this. We went and we came back with all this wood alone, yeah? It builds that. So, um, I would take number four. The reason why I was saying number four is, yes, accidents will happen, but there's, there's a reason why we have um, the honor on coming.
I'll move to the second one. Okay, the Palapanga unit decides to go horseback riding with their Tatsla and all of them have ridden horses before. Anne asks each of them to walk the horse whenever footing is unsure. So instead of um, galloping with the horse, you just walk, even though they're on the back. Um, all goes well until they start back to the stables. A short distance from the stables, on a rocky downhill trail, Susie, who is riding at the head of the group, lets her horse break into a trot. The other pathfinders follow Susie's example, but Anne, who is the last rider, holds her horse to a walk and brings up the rear. When Anne arrives at the stables, she reprimands Susie and tells her she cannot ride with the group again. What would you have done? Number one, ignore the incident. I mean, no one was injured. So what's the issue? Yeah? You would just have ignored the incident. Number two, uh, you would have ridden in front of the what? In front of the group. Number three, you would have made the decision that Anne made. Number four, you reprimanded all the pathfinders and deprived them of future riding. Number five, discuss the situation, explaining the reason for the safety precaution, and warn that the infraction should not occur.
excuse him to say accident do happen, and we would not say ah, the pathfinder's fault. Because yes, we might have done something, all the things right, but something has just gone, or has just gone wrong. Yeah, so it's, it's not saying, I oh, know, the pathfinder is the one who is that. But uh, there's the end point where you start to say, okay, they've done coming schools, they're allowed to go and, and, and get to uh, their own language. <coughs> Saying three. Okay, she is saying three. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, two, three, two. Leadership starts. Yeah. Leadership.
come to it with us. Meaning, the ways that we are going to use, the things that we are going to do, we should always have in mind that God is with us, with worship, with whatever it is. So that's one uh, important guideline uh, of camping. And uh, guidelines of a good camp out. There's a list of what you bring. There's certain clothing that you have to bring, things that you say, this you can't bring, this you have to bring, consider the weather, uh, you need a book, a pump. The one that I wanted to make clear is make sure you bring humor. Uh, club leadership yesterday, he spoke about a leader needs to have a sense of humor. Because pathfinders are going to do things that sometimes, if you don't have a sense of humor, you know, if you just go up one moment after the, after the other, yeah? So you need to make sure you have a sense of humor, have a lot of patience, helpfulness, and determination to go through everything. Um, as I was speaking when we started, remember the story yes, we're getting there at 90, there's no what, there's no what. You need to have patience. You need to have a sense of humor. Okay, well, this is what's happening. I know it's okay, it's fine. You laugh it off and you continue. Uh, you also need to make cooking arrangements. Who is going to cook? Where are we going to cook? How is it going to be cooked? Are we baking it? Are we boiling? Are we frying? Are we roasting? All these different things will have to be considered. This, when you talk about a good camp out, on the go, if we're talking about a camp where we're going to get from one place to the next to the next, that's a traveling camp, there are things that we need to consider, okay, how long are we going to walk? How long are we going to rest? Um, prepare mentally, prepare physically, some people get to a point where they say, I don't think I can take another step. But uh, it's something that we need, to, we need to consider. And then when you come back, you do an analysis. What did we use? What did I not use? What could I do? What observations did I need? Whilst I was going, camping. This is just a, a brief. And then we have something that is called the country code. Uh, when you are out in the country. Don't leave guitar, close the gates, resourcefulness. Uh, some of these were already covered by Comrade Brazilia uh, yesterday. So, types of camping. Uh, we always say variety is the spice of life. Pathfinders hate doing the same thing. We did this this year, we're doing it again when? Next year, oh, we're doing it again when the year. We did this last quarter, we're doing it again what? This quarter, ah, oh, we're doing it again. It's just going to get what? Boring. So we always talk about um, variety, but also something that is challenging. Depending on the age group. Pathfinders who are now voyage uh, guide, who are much older, also want something that is a bit more challenging. So instead of just having a simple side camp, this is where we now introduce survival camp. You are going to have your bag, make sure you have everything you need for three days. We are going to carry it on your back, we are going to go for 120 kilometers, we are going to be camping what? So they need to be okay, what am I carrying? How much am I? Am I carrying? What's the weight of the stuff that I need to have? How do I pack my backpack? So it's, it's just things that are, that are challenging for, for pathfinders. And the goal of the camp determines the size that you are going to. Yeah? Uh, you don't decide that uh, we want to do canoeing and then go to a place that doesn't have a proper flowing stream. I, I hope we are, I hope we are together. Yeah? So depending on what you want to do. So another aspect is when we talk about the, the, the site that we are going to, uh, what we are seeing there is what is known as abseiling. Yeah? So abseiling, you are seeing you go, it's on a cliff and you drop down using using a rock. Yeah? If we've got up saying don't tax our energies and time taking us for bike riding, for canoeing, for all these different things. The goal is for us to do what? Up saying So this is also part of our planning of our camp. So types of camp, I've already spoken about the first one, which is a site camp. This is just starting. You get your cars, you go to a site. Everything that you are going to do, you erect your tents. They stay there for the entire duration of the, of the camp. At the end of the camp, you pack your things, you go home. Uh, the good thing about this is you can achieve a 
number of things. This is the type of term that is usually done with larger groups. So the larger the group, it's usually just a side term. <coughs> Excuse me, it's usually just a side term. And what people will do is, um, is they will set up, say, on this section, or in this corner, or this section, or this corner, or this section, and you will rotate. So there's a register. Today, group A, you are doing this. Tomorrow, you are doing this. Next day, you are doing this. So that's a, a side term. Uh, but one thing that I wanted to put across is the goal of the camp should not be to have fun. That's not the goal. Having fun is a by product. We had fun. But the goal is people should learn. The philosophy that we spoke about. When you're planning a camp, when you're saying, guys, let's go out, there are things that you want the pathfinders to, the pathfinders to learn. Um, the other type of camp is what is known as a traveling camp. So a traveling camp is where you have a particular trail. I'm not going to bring those there. It's where you have a particular trail. And then you're going to say, okay guys, we're going to start off from here. This is the route that we're going to take. It's going to take us three days, or it's going to take us four days to get to where we are, to where we are going. And before you go on this, at least the leader should have gone on that trail before. That way they know to say, if you want water, it's here. If we have an emergency, we can go here. Whatever we need, the leader should be very familiar with the setup of the route that they are going to uh, the route that, that they are going to take. As you are going on a traveling camp, different people have different physical um, abilities in terms of condition of fitness and health. Don't have one path finder, and I've seen this a lot when people go hiking. You have one group that is very zealous, and they are And then there are others who are not as energetic, and now they are left behind. And sometimes you end up having two groups or three groups, and the ones that are always behind can become discouraged. So what is always encouraged is have one leader at the front who regulates the pace, and also have one leader at the Types of camps that we go is a hiking camp, so where you hike two, three days. Canoe camps, um, I don't know how close the those are here, but I know in other places they do them. Where you are on canoes, you canoe for a certain distance, you stop and come, next day so and so. Uh, bicycle camps, I've seen a number of these happening, you get your bikes, you ride two, three hundred kilometers, you ride 50 k's a day, you stop, you rest on a bicycle. Trail. Ski camps, not possible here, um, but it's something that is done in other, other places. The last three, bus safari, car safari, bus tour, these are not, we don't count them as camps per se, it's more entertainment. Because the campsite is the bus, or the campsite is the car, or the campsite is the um, uh, whatever mode of transport that is being, that is being used. Components of good camping. So these are the components of good camping. I'm just explaining this so at least it comes easier when you do go through the notes. So these are the basic components. Uh, I'll run through them in brief. This should be the last slide. There. Number one, basic component of good camping is selection of the site. It is always encouraged. Should be higher ground. Don't camp near a swamp. Uh, the reason why we also talk about higher ground is we do have certain camps where it rains so badly and the water just flowed into everything all the time. So it's always encouraged you have to be high ground, um, nice and uh, nice and proper, dry. You just want to avoid colds, uh, sore throat, things like those mosquitoes. So we always encourage you to go in higher ground. Uh, you also need to have very important water supply. It's fun, yes, for people to say, first day, oh no, let's walk out two kilometers to go and back. You go and get water to cook. But as you go along, if every time you want water, you have to walk two kilometers, you can agree with me that it becomes inconvenient and people won't, uh, won't, won't enjoy that. Yeah? So you also need to plan for, for your water supply uh, very well. Another aspect is fuel, that's your firewood. Nice dry logs, where you get to get your firewood? Uh, the campsite that you're using, because this is going to be made a source. I think I'll just combine firewood and firewood. So there are also fire essentials that will fire, assist you with. Uh, number 
camps and shelters. So we always talk about clearing the ground. Huh? If you don't clear the ground, if you, as I was mentioning, you get there, there's grass, there are trees, there's what, and you just say, I'm just going to pitch my tent. Sometimes the tent will be slot, but also because now, of course, people carry really inflated, those inflated uh, mattresses. But if you are sleeping on the floor, once you are inside, then you wish that you have cleared the ground and everybody else was doing what? Was clearing the ground. Because you won't sleep, it's very uncomfortable with um, things that are in the bottom. And uh, finally, outpost cooking. This is where we're talking about, okay, are you baking? Are you boiling? Are you frying? Are you roasting? How are you doing it? Are you building an oven? Things like those fire building, the types of fires that you can light. Are we going to carry matches and a lighter? We're using a magnifying glass or a lens of your camera, or a lens of your binoculars. Um, I'm using a steel and a flint to light the fire with level of difficulty. The last one, which takes time, obviously very difficult, is using uh, rubbing your twigs uh, together uh, to make the fire. And pathfinders love to eat. That's the last thing about uh, good camp. Pathfinders love to eat. So, if you have good food, that's one of the things that will be solved. If they enjoy the food, they enjoy the camp. You will forget all about the attitudes and other things that other things that they have to do. So that's the, the basic brief on camping, as far as camping and outdoor education um, is concerned. Do we have any questions?
evaluate like being a saint. Now, when we're talking about planning, why? That's what we want to look at. Why should we plan? What are the goals? How effective are our programs? Who is accountable? And when is the program implemented? And where could we better improve what would be uh, better if we had done things the way we should have done them? So, suppose you were a, a master guide, or even uh, a master guide in training, and you've been instructed, and you've been instructed by an instructor, or to be an instructor for a local adventure club, what activities do you need to consider to cover requirements? Well, you can pick adventure or or pathfinder. Suppose you had been asked to be an instructor for a local club or a leader for a local club. What activities, what sort of activities do you quickly think you can put in place so that the program runs? Mm -hmm. Just mention a few that you can think of, whether it's in the adventure club or in the pathfinder club. Nature walks. Nature walks, yes. Camping.
So we try to organize the activities. So in planning, basically, I think what, we, what is here is we, we already discussed that. What are we doing and what should we do to achieve our goals? We should, and, and when we plan, we get information on progress towards the goals and also we can identify where we need to, what was done well, what was done poorly, how can we improve? So, so when we are planning, we are collecting information about activities, characters, the outcomes of programs to make judgments about the program, to improve program effectiveness and or inform decisions about future programs. Right, the specific aims of organized curriculum work of the Adventure of Pathfinder Club Ministry. So when we are planning or programming, we need to make sure that we have a calendar of events. It's one of the first things we start with. When are we going to do this? And for how long is it going to take? We also need to plan for regular meetings. For example, here, uh, most usually pathfinders meet every week. And usually you find that maybe they have maybe their classes or every Sabbath and maybe their drills every Sunday or fortnightly, whichever. You look at how many hours that is going to take you and plan for those meetings. Even the monthly events or the bi-monthly events, you can plan for those. In physical fitness, things like um, sports day and so on, they are also essential for these little ones, because they also need to run around. It came out, you are planning, isn't it? So you've got your, your, your calendar, and your calendar needs to include some of those things, and for each item, you also need to plan. For example, if we are going to go for camp, we don't just wake up one day and say we are going for camp. We have to plan for it in advance. So when we are planning for camp, we are planning on how, we are planning on the transport logistics, the accommodation, the meals, everything, security, health, every department, everything that is going to take place, how, for how long are we going to be there, and what is it that we need to carry, and so on. So we plan for each activity in advance, but we start with that calendar. So our activities are supposed to be organized and why? Because organized activities will provide a clear understanding of the objectives to be reached during the adventure or pathfinder year and it will help us to meet the growing needs of the juniors or the junior youth and it will lead junior youth through a course of study towards the final recognition in an investiture service. Comrade William talked about the that, uh, about the fact that we always have an investiture at the end because we are recognizing um, their efforts in what they were studying. Now there is a um, question, determine how to use available resources in planning club activities. What are we saying? If we are going to plan, we need to have our resources in place. Is that so? When we don't have resources, are we going to be able to achieve our goals? We can't achieve our goals, can we? We can't. And therefore, as a club, we need to plan. When we are planning, we are also planning not only the activities, but also the, the resources. Where are we getting our funding from? And how does it work? So the leader looks at the mission, the purpose, and then they put the structure in place, they make sure that they've got the necessary skill or they can actually invite people to assist. One person cannot have all skills. It's not possible. You might be skilled in one but not the rest. So you need to make sure that you have mechanisms that help you to achieve your, to achieve the goals of the club. And you need to make sure that we have a good relationship with 
the community, you are able to coordinate the staff. The staff is part of the resources, isn't it? So we are able to coordinate and so that we can we can work together well. So that is part of the planning. So we are not only planning activities, but we also plan our resources. We have human resources, we have financial resources, we it, it's a big club, I'll tell you. Um the youth department is like a school. So you've got the teachers, you've got the facilitators, you've got this and this. So all those things you need to be able to bring together to coordinate and to make sure things are in place. You identify even the people who are going to be helping you throughout the year with this activity, with that, with that area, with that area, so that things, things can move. Otherwise, you'll be overwhelmed on your own. You can't do everything.